Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to this session, the live stream fitness panel here, um, 4.30 British Overcast time, that's BST for those of you outside the UK. Uh, it's uh, a wonderful occasion because we're doing the VegFest UK Summerfest online 2020 for the very first time. It's been a, a pretty much a marathon sprint over the last um, two and a half days. Um, We've still got two or three sessions to go, and there's fantastic uh, content up on the website here at the event. Of course, as you will already know, you can access this for free, but it's also important to know that this is being recorded and that this session will be available on the event platform uh, later on. The event platform stays open for 30 days, which means up until 15th September, you, colleagues, family, friends can come along anytime, access any of the wonderful 20 live streams we're going to have over the weekend. Um, and I think at the last count, something round about between 80 and 90 presentations, performances, talks, discussions, and, and, and information about, you know, just the whole, whole wide widest range you can imagine really of everything to do with veganism and plant-based diets um, and of course when it comes to plant-based diets um, it's becoming further more and more well known about the benefits of plant-based diets in relation to fitness um, especially in terms of recovery that is just absolutely crystal clear now but also interestingly in developing strength and endurance. Um, so um, on that note, I'd be very happy to hand over and welcome our resident expert here, Nathan Lawton, who has been part of the Vegan Bodybuilders for a number of years. He's been running the competitions. He's a personal trainer. And by the look of him, I think he might possibly guess that this gentleman does work out. So he may have a working knowledge of how to build muscles. There you go. Just in case you weren't quite sure, that is plant-based muscle and uh, Nathan thanks for joining us do um do take over this panel and then I'll be I'll be lurking <laughs> yeah feel free to jump whenever you want Tim thank you for that yeah so uh, the today's panel uh, we're going to be talking about everything to do with fitness strength you know um, people's journeys um, we're going to you know try and delve into a few things that you probably wouldn't uh, find out generally from somebody so we're trying to get a little, a little bit deeper into things really find out how people train what they've um, you know benef benefits they've had from from uh, going vegan um, with their training as well so we're going to do a little bit of a um, ask a question and go through the people and um, find out general you know basic things really and um, we've got Dave here as well that Dave Sheehan is going to be uh, sort of co-hosting a bit jumping in if he's got any other questions for people while we go through it um, it'd be nice to maybe start with uh, Paula and Tori if you could just say how long you've been vegan for um, and just a quick just a quick thing on uh, you know what made you turn vegan yeah so hi everyone I'm Paula uh, I've been vegan for five years um, I'm from Brazil I've been living in the UK for three years now and in Brazil I was always super worried about animals I would say I'm an animal lover so I rescue more than a hundred dogs from the streets and uh, cats and always trying to help animals. And for me, at some point, it didn't make sense anymore to be rescuing dogs. But at the same time, going home and eating cows, chickens, like it doesn't make sense. How can I be an animal lover, but abuse animals at the same time? So that's what mainly made me vegan, the animals and what happens to them. And I don't want to support that industry. Mm. Up to you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tori. Uh, I live down here in Cornwall um, and I've been vegan, it'll be three years this October. Um, I lived around like farms and stuff and thought, you know, it was like a normal life around here. Most people in Cornwall are living near farms. Um, so it wasn't until I looked into like the health side, I had rheumatoid arthritis at 17 and unfortunately meant that I was like bed bound. And someone said about looking at what you eat. So I actually went like dairy free um, and other things. And that was like my first stepping stone into like looking at 
who I was eating and why. And then, yeah, it like led into me being vegan. I never look back and I can work out and I'm not bed bound anymore. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Excellent. What about you, Annalise? Um, so I've been vegan for 20, 21 years now. Um, so a really long time. Um, so I was 14, um, but actually I didn't consume much animal products prior to that. Um, the reason being that I always saw them as an animal. It was really strange. I remember at quite a young age being at a family barbecue and being given this chicken drumsticks, you know, on the bone and um, looking at it and being absolutely horrified that I was eating this piece of meat on the bone to be told, well, you eat that anyway. We just cut it up. We just cut it up for you. You don't see the bone. And I think it was that point that triggered it for me, having this animal bone in my hand. And then after that, all I could think of every time I had meat on my plate was this is an animal. And for me, that was just completely wrong. So, yeah. yeah. You guys, uh, <laughs> do it. Stop in there, Nate, for a sec. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. Just, uh, like Annalise, you said there, you know, there's that specific moment you held that chicken bone yeah. and looked at it and you had that connection. For Paul and Tori, like, you know, you shared a little bit about your reason. You know, again, like that, was there a particular moment that really made you go, right, that's it. You became emotionally conscious of what's really going on and made the decision, I'm definitely going vegan from then on. So any particular moment, like for Annalise, holding that chicken bone. Yeah, so for me, like, I became vegetarian when I was seven years old. Uh, my father decided to go vegetarian and he told the family like guys I'm not eating meat anymore because um, he went to India and he did some courses there and I was like why are you not eating meat anymore and he just had to say one sentence meat is comes from a dead animal and from that moment on when I was seven years old I said I never want to eat that again I can't believe the meat is a dead animal but I would still eat eggs and dairy. I was vegetarian. So what made me actually go vegan was uh, street activism. <laughs> uh, and that's what we do a lot here in Plymouth. Um, yeah, I just passed uh, through some activists and they were holding screens and showing what happens in the dairy industry and with fish and with eggs. And just watching that was like, damn, like, I can't do this anymore. So... I think also street activism is super important because that's what made me go vegan. Excellent. That's an interesting point, right, isn't it? When you see that, you know, that when you chat to young children, most of them have got no idea that they're even eating an animal, yes. which is, uh, you know, let's like say once you, once you connected with that, it was, it was as simple as that for you, wasn't it? Yeah. What about you, Tori? Was there any specific thing? I'd say that um, watching Blackfish, the documentary, uh, it's about orcas um, and what we've done to them to put them into tiny tanks um, in like SeaWorld. They, um, mm. I, I used to work out on boats for conservation as well as tourism. So to take people out to see whales and like dolphins and sea life so that they understood like we're on the planet with them rather than like they're here for us. And so watching Blackfish when I work, uh, lived back in Cornwall I realized I was speciesist because I'm like living next to cows that like I, I, I didn't grow up right next to a farm but I'd moved next to the daughter of farms I literally like heard these like cattle like from when they were babies and then would hear them like going off and I watched blackfish and I was like why do I care so much about like that I wanted to be an activist like because I saw them outside SeaWorld and I was like why do I care so much about going to help them but not the cows next door. Mm. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, just that one connection yeah. there. Yeah. What about you, Dave? Uh, for, for me, like a, a big thing for me was watching my son being raised vegan, you know, and as I've shared before, for me, veganism at the time, which I went vegan first of um, January 2012. So it's coming up to nine years at the end of this year. But before that, he was born in 2005. Before that, I just saw it as something that was nearly like a cult. It was, you know, it was just a crazy fatty diet that people are on. So this is, again, the kind of, I suppose, mentality I had around that time because it went against everything I had learned. 25 years ago, I started off getting into the fitness industry and health industry. And you were taught all the time about protein needs and dairy and meat and all these different things. And, you know, not eating meat just 
you know, wasn't, it didn't make sense. You needed it just to build muscle or whatever it is you're trying to do. We needed dairy for your bones and for everything else. So, you know, it, me watching him initially, when I expect him to get very ill and it went the total opposite where he actually thrived and grew and cognition, his body b- built up, everything that really struck me. And it's what made me really look into it and research it more, talk to people, try different things, experiment myself. And, um, you know, it's just all the way along, just gradually making little changes, cutting out meat, cutting out chicken, then cutting out fish, then the dairy went gradually all the time as well. And um, eventually, uh, like I shared yesterday, it was September 2011, I was speaking at an event in Salt Lake City, America, and afterwards I decided to treat myself to a tub of Ben & Jerry's, which I hadn't had for about four or five months. And I had the first spoon salivating at the thought of it, looking forward to it, put it in, and it tasted sour. And it's something I've been told for years that when you give up dairy for a while, it actually tastes sour. And there is a proof. So I was Ben and Jerry's out the window. So I said, OK, I, I, let's give this vegan thing. A, let's go full hog first of January and see how we go. And it's nearly nine years later. So, you know, so for me, again, it was like watch, my son has been the big stimulation for me. He's 15 now. But to see that, see the difference between him and kids of his age at the time, whether they were just born, two years of age, three years of age and so on it constantly made an impact on me, you know? So, so that's kind of, that's, that's what stimulated me. Yeah. Do we still have Tim with us? It'd be nice to hear um, Tim's story from the start, if he's, if he's still about. Is he there? He might be out and about. If, he'll hear you if, if he's on, I'd say. I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll go through my story. Is it, yeah, go on then. Yeah, so my story, I've been vegan Virtually 15 years to the day now, it's somewhere around the middle of August when I went vegan. Um, mine, uh, initially, before before this, this point, I was uh, eating pretty much anything, you know, the same as most of the population. Um, never even thought about where the food came from. Just used to eat, you know, because you needed to. And uh, as my ex-girlfriend at the time, she was vegetarian. She sent for some leaf that's through uh, the post uh, from a company called Animal Aid. And they all turned up in this big, big envelope and uh, all different leaflets on, you know, to do with everything, the way we use animals for the, for the food, the, you know, the um, uh, vivisection, you know, the clothing, things like that. And we just found everything in one gar and, and I, was, I was quite shocked really. We didn't even really speak to each other. We just kept looking through these leaflets and, uh, and uh, yeah, everything hit me at once. And I was like, oh, I just can't be part of that. So uh, that was it. We both decided that at that moment in time, we went through the went through the cupboard, took out everything that wasn't vegan, gave it away to to people we knew, and uh, and that was it. Yeah, fifteen years ago. So that's my little story there, and and then uh, and then it keeps me going now is is my children really and making sure that um, they've been vegan the whole life as well, and uh, just making sure they knew that you know is a is a healthy way to live and. Um, one of the things about them, they say my oldest kids are 13 and almost 15 now. They've never had a single day off school, school ill. Um, they've won every running race through the whole of their school lives. So just, just things like that, you know, it makes you know that, it's, you know, we can easily thrive on a, on a vegan diet. So that's, that's why I try and promote it so much, whether it's because you care for animals or the health reasons or, you know, environmental impact or even things like the you know, pandemics that we've got going on now. There's always should there should always be a reason to be able to convince somebody to go vegan. I think, so. and it's fantastic yeah, that you've so, raised uh, your kids vegan as well, Nathan. You know, like that's fantastic, and for people who are listening, you know, it's going to be very inspiring for them. It's inspiring for them whether they are parents or they will be parents or they hope to be parents in the future to see that it is possible yeah. because it's not something you hear a lot about. Obviously, there are vegan parents out there. There are kids who have been raised vegan since birth. But, uh, you know, you don't hear a lot about it. So it'd be great for viewers to hear that. Like, it's like, I have one son raised since birth. Mm-hmm. You have two kids raised since birth. Any of the girls, any of you got kids? No. Not yet? But no. again, that for in, like for in the future, now that you're on your own vegan journey, you know, again, you're learning more and more about yourselves. And obviously, then, you know, the decision will be made. And if you ever do have kids, then what way you're going to raise them, you know? So, so it's an important area. It's an area that needs to get out there more and more with people. Um, question I, just yeah. go on, yeah. Okay. yeah so, think? like, for me, it was so easy. Like, when I was seven years old, my, my father just had to say that animals should be killed for food, and I made the connection right away. Like, I think for kids, it's so much easier 
like they are not so brainwashed during their entire lives. And they are kind, like we are born kind. And innocent. We, and innocent. And I think if kids know what actually their food is, I think all of them would choose to go vegan. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, think, I think that's a great point because any kids that I have met or come across or spoken to or spoken to their parents who are vegan, it was always something like that, a very innocent question. You know, what's that? Or, you know, where does that come from? And they're absolutely, like, I, I coach a lady in Scotland, for instance. I've coached them last year now and moving the whole family vegan. So there's a husband, a wife, and the girl, I think she's, what is she, five, six? And with the, with the child, it was just a thing of her becoming a bit more inquisitive and asking questions. And, you know, what's that? Where does that come from? And they're literally horrified when they actually yeah. find out that this is coming from an animal. Mm -hmm. so it's like the way people would see a lamb in a feed and go, oh, it's so cute. Look at the cute little lamb. But then the next, next, an hour or two later, they're eating lamb on their plate. And it's just that emotional connection. There's no consciousness there. Whereas kids, as you said, they think much more simply. They're not as conditioned. And they, people are, I agree with you 100%, they're born with love in their heart. They're born as good people. You know, society experience, it's the environment you grow up in, the experiences you have in life that can change some people, unfortunately. But uh, kids are so innocent. And it's, if they learn the actual truth, you know, practically every kid would go vegan straight away. So great point. Yes, very true. Let's let's go on to a bit about the, the fitness side of it then. So um, maybe start with uh, Annalise this time, and uh, you know when your journey going through. You know, um, I know you obviously into fitness and things like that. How have you noticed any um, differences with? I suppose because you've been vegan so long, it's a bit hard. Yeah. To, so the diff the different side is. The different side is really difficult because I've been vegan for sort of 20 plus years. Um, I don't have much of a comparison. So although I was about 14 at the time and I was sort of a young teenager and fitness sort of in the late 90s was not the same as it is now. People and kids sort of that age, we didn't really have the interest. So me stopping eating animal products and then doing any fitness it just wasn't really there I wasn't unfit I was still sort of a slim healthy um teenager but I wasn't into gym or anything like that so um I don't really have the comparison but obviously as I've got older I'm now 35 um I'd like to think that I'm in pretty good shape for my age and it's actually improving with time so the more I put into my fitness I started sort of the weightlifting probably probably two years ago um and that hasn't been there hasn't been any issues for me I'm growing muscle I'm getting bigger um for anybody interested like I'm quite a small build anyway so my bone structure is quite small I'm quite naturally slim um mm. so putting on muscle I thought would be really difficult for me and I would have to eat loads and that it was going to be really hard work um I'm not saying it was easy but I've probably Put on about a stone and a half of muscle I'm you know there's no fat to me but I have grown I have gained size um, and that is just on a vegan diet um, I take protein powder sort of after workouts but that's about it so I don't think gaining size especially for women and you can even be a slim small built person and you can still do it yeah that's that's great inspiration <laughs> A lot of women as well. Fantastic. I know, Paula, you you have a bit of a similar situation because you you went to training quite a lot, didn't you? And uh, lost some weight and gained gained quite a bit of muscle as well. So maybe you could tell us your story. Yeah. So um, I was completely sedentary my entire life. I was actually quite unhealthy. Like I used to smoke and drink a lot. And I start thinking like, I'm going to the streets to save animals, but I'm also an animal and I'm destroying myself. So I start like thinking like, I really want to be healthier and I was unhappy with my body. So two and a half years ago, I started going to the gym and completely falling off it. And all my friends are like, oh, as a woman and vegan, it's going to be super hard to gain muscle. But actually... It wasn't super easy, as Annalise said, but actually my body changed completely. Like I lost five kilos of fat. I gained like three kilos of muscle. And 
yeah, it's been amazing. Like I used to have hypothyroidism. I don't have any more. I'm never sick anymore. Like I feel amazing. And I think it's also good activism to go to the gym wearing my vegan t-shirt and show you I'm strong. <laughs> and yeah, I, I made some people vegan just from them like seeing how my body changed and how I got strong. To see like, yeah, vegans can be strong. Women can be super strong, have muscle. And there's no problem at all. Like you really don't need animal products for that. Yeah, like you say, that, that side of it as well, the activism of, you know, showing that you can change your body and, you know, be a lot fitter and healthier as well as, you know, not causing any harm is, is a fantastic way of promoting it to people, isn't it? Yeah. What about you, Toro? So I grew up uh, sailing and racing. So I used to like race a couple times a week and train and stuff. Uh, and then, like I said, when I was 17, I most probably drank too much, smoked too much and tried to train and race too much. <laughs> so I ended yeah. up with arthritis. Um, and then, yeah, like for me, I always wanted to exercise. Like I used to swim and stuff like that. So to have something that meant that I couldn't exercise really mentally, like I struggled with it. So that's why I did then mm. look into like what I ate, which I know like quite a lot of people that end up um, being vegan look at like plant-based first and then realize like about the animals. Um, mm. So yeah, for me, it was like, how can I like get up and walk again? Like, what can I do? So yeah, going dairy free. And I know Dave said about it, like for me it was like I can control something again just like exercising like yeah I can control what I'm eating and it might make me better so um within a week my inflammation went down in all my joints so I look back at the person that I was before I was vegan and I was so unhealthy like I made my body ill like I made myself sick um from what I ate so compared to now like I get up I'm like an early riser I want to exercise in the morning and like I roll out of bed I've got loads of energy I'm a runner so um Paola got me in lockdown to do a virtual half marathon so we did that um absolutely love it um haven't got any like inflammation back in my whole entire life since being vegan um yeah just love training go to the gym like at our local gym people are always asking me questions like Paola said like you wear like your plant-based or like vegan t-shirts um like you know plant powered and stuff and i'm like how are you doing this like how have you got some? i'm like the idiot that's like jumping around the gym with too much energy and um i love hit classes and hit sessions and they're like how are you got so much energy and i'm like oh it's all the beans i eat <laughs> so it's, it's brilliant yeah that's great yeah i think the, the inflammation is a big thing for for most people really because it's the cause of you know, most issues people have, isn't it? So, uh, yeah. you know, just as you say in there, what just a, a single week of changing, changing your food made it made a huge difference, didn't it? So, you know, even if people can just take that away from all this, it's a, you know, it's a fantastic diet for reducing inflammation, definitely. Yeah. What about you, Dave? I know you're into ridiculous amounts of exercise in, in different forms. So take us through that yeah. sort of thing. How you, you felt? I yeah, know, made a huge difference. Just a quick one, just before we finish that, oh, yeah. that uh, topic there with Tori. Um, you, you, like that, you said in one week it totally changed you know, in terms of inflammation. And it's interesting, like rheumatoid arthritis at 17, you know. Um, was the dairy the first one you gave up? Was that the one you really focused on giving up and you noticed the biggest difference from when you did? Yeah. So I was someone that would drink a pint of milk before I went to bed. Yeah. Just like unheard of now, like cow's milk. And, um, yeah, it was the first one. Like, I, I went and spoke to my mum's friend and yeah, they said like dairy is an inflammator and like now I know about like the China study. So I'm like, oh, I actually like, I went through a phase of being angry that doctors weren't telling me. I'd gone through like all the medical sites. I was on loads of meds and they hadn't helped me for years. Um, if anything, it made me worse because of the side effects of them. So like it was the first thing that I felt like if I change my diet, I have control of my own body again. So I'm going to try anything. But yeah, I tried dairy first and it literally within a week, like if you can imagine like your joints aching, like the ache went, which meant that I could move more. So I was saying to Paula, like, I don't necessarily think of like exercise, like I have to go to the gym to exercise. I like call it movement. 
it's like a big thing for me to move. Mm. So whatever I'm doing, I've just come back from sea swimming. That's why my hair's all wet and I look a mess. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's my movement for the day. I cycled in and then like went swimming and then, so just keep moving and do stuff that like mentally makes you feel good and your body feels good. Excellent. Yeah, I think we, we talk a lot about gym, but it's not the only exercise that it exists, right? Yeah, yeah. No, because I think it's really important for people to hear stories like that, because at the end of the day, the dairy industry, the food industry, the marketing that's out there on TV and the magazines and everything, it's all about how dairy is so important for your bones and how dairy is how you get the calcium from your bones. And like in Ireland, we had an advert before, I don't know if it still runs, but it's like this uh, wooden man guy. And it's about giving milk to kids and then bones and bones need calcium and about making them strong, a whole kind of song jingle. When the reality is it's leaching calcium from your bones and making them weaker and, and causing bone disease instead of preventing it. And it's an important message we need to get out there more and more. So it's fantastic to hear like, it, like that's a unique enough story at such a young age to have it, but to have such a quick fix from obviously results vary from everyone. But at the end of the day, quitting dairy or at least minimizing it will make a huge difference any bone issues. So fantastic, Tori. Great story. Um, so in terms of, for me, in terms of, you know, to change for me, like when I went vegan in, in January 1st, 2012, you know, that was what, about three years into when I got into triathlons. So the very direct comparison of before vegan and after vegan. And, yeah. the, and even along the way, in terms of my journey towards going vegan, the differences I was seeing the biggest was in my uh, performance and recovery. Like it just went through the roof. Like I've always been a very determined person. I've always had a good mindset. I've trained hard, whatever I do, whether it be sports or individual disciplines, I've always put everything I could into it. And um, so the mind was never really an issue, but it was just performing more, improving more, recovering faster. After a hard session, I typically would need, you know, a day or two's rest before going hard again. I'd still be training, but I mean like really going right to the wire. So that was kind of like before vegan, I needed like one or two days before going again. After going vegan, I, every day I have to be training hard. You know, four or five days out of every six, I could easily go absolutely full on and progressive, <clears throat> like completely improving every time. And, you know, a big moment again for me with training was one day, I might have been maybe six months before I went fully vegan, but one day I was out cycling and usually during like something like a two hour cycle, an hour in, hour 15, you really start to start hitting a wall a bit and it becomes more about your mind and have to dig in and actually you know, get yourself to the end of the, of the training session. Whereas I actually got a kick. Like I started feeling myself going down a little bit in terms of energy. And then I suddenly, I know I got this kind of kick, like a second wind, like a second boost of energy. And it drove on then to the end. So this is the thing about when you're fueling your body with plants, like again, you're fueling your body with pure energy. And it gives you so much more energy, both in a performance situation, when you need to dig deep and also in recovery. Like the recovery is absolutely phenomenal. And even with injuries, I, you know, I would have always had injuries now and again, whether it was playing football or when I did bodybuilding or when I was doing the endurance sports. But like from my experience now for the last nearly nine years, I, I, yeah, I don't even think I've had an injury. And even if it's just like a bit of a strain, you recover so much faster. Like they're literally, it's like night and day, the difference. And this is where when people at least make the change or move that direction, they can notice differences so fast that it leaves them with no choice really, but to go full hog on it. So that's some of the bit of experiences I've had. How about you, Nathan? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so I've you know, definitely noticed um, differences in you know, how quick you can recover, how quick you can you know, train again after, um, after a hard session. And just, yeah, just the, the lack of you know, DOMS you get, you know, the muscle soreness and things like that. It's, um, you know, I can train really hard and, and still only just, you know, feel it a little bit the next day. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice feeling to be able to push yourself, you know, very hard, knowing that you've, you've fueled yourself on all these, like you said, it's not, it's, um, it's all the nutrients you're getting as well with the food. So if somebody's eating meat for protein, that's pretty much all you're getting. You're getting obviously the cholesterol in it as well, but, but you, you're getting, you know, you're just getting pretty much protein and fats and, you know, and that's about it. But when we're having our things like the beans and lentils and, you know, chickpeas and nuts and seeds, we're getting all the other nutrients on with that we need, all the all the vitamins and minerals that we've got in these these other foods that we're having. And that's that's where everything works together and that's where it really helps us um, you know, improve on all these things with the training and especially the recovery obviously as well. 
So yeah, that, that's my that's my take on it. Really, I didn't really train too much before I was vegan, so it's hard to to compare the difference. But when I speak to a lot of people who have, who have you know made the transition in between, you know, like like Dave here, um, they all say that the the recovery is just phenomenal once they once they've changed what they eat. So it's very interesting. And just just going back to the just going back to the dairy thing as well. While we you know when we were talking about that before, I am. Um, I used to have really bad um, stomach issues. I went to the doctor, this is before I was vegan, a couple of years before I was vegan. And um, the doctor, oh yeah, you've got IBS, you know, there's not a lot you can do about it. Drive me on a few different tablets and stuff like that. Nothing nothing helped and and, and very much the same as, as Tori said there, no one ever suggested it could be dairy that was causing it. And, and, even, and even at the point when I went vegan, it wasn't because you know because of this dairy intolerance that I obviously had, but, but as soon as I went vegan, I never had any stomach issues, you know, to that day. So, you know, what, why weren't people saying? I know it was a long time ago now, but you know, why, why was no one ever suggesting that you know these these things were consuming? Are, you know, are so bad for us, really. And it shows you just how much they like like Dave said about the you know, promotion on you know dairy and you know good for bones and all these other other things that they come up with and uh, it's all you know complete rubbish isn't it really totally Nate. um there's a question i want to ask ask the girls but before we go on to that just yeah. while we're on specifically exercise just a question that came in from Chobella. Uh, as someone with variable ex energy sorry as someone with variable energy because of multiple sclerosis what's the best exercise to do so what kind of advice would you give as a personal trainer um, what well, they got multiple sources, multiple sources, and also very variable energy as a result. Uh, are they vegan already? Did they say? I'm guessing they. They haven't said. Actually, I'd say they are because she also told me that her son has been vegan. What's it? Fifteen? Yeah, I think about fifteen years or something like that, but a long time. So I presume she's probably vegan too. Yeah, it sounds like she probably would be. Um, yeah, I think I think the key really is you know starting off very very slowly. Uh, with exercise or definitely trying to get the the diet on point you know as, as much as possible you know completely like, like like we do dave you know whole foods you know loads of different colored you know vegetables and get some fruits in there really try and try and get that diet absolutely spot on because that's really going to help with with the issues that they've got um generally sort of training wise yeah you, you just want to be just just doing something just up to the point where you know it's not it's not too painful and then just maybe knocking it back a little bit and just just gradually pushing it on it as much as you can really it's, it's going to be a quite a slow process but hopefully the the change you know the changing in the foods is really going to help with uh, you know getting on top of that that's a it, it's a challenging one that one is what would you suggest as well yeah, and just keeping things a little bit more low impact. It, like it all depends on you know your abilities, what you can do right now, and what you feel you can't do. Obviously, like you said, Chabella, your energy is a big thing. So the days you don't feel super energetic, just take it easy. Just tick the box. Yeah. Like exercise doesn't always have to be going hard towards a goal. Sometimes just ticking the box is a big achievement. So it might be just a, a, going for a walk even for 20 minutes. It's like Tori was saying, even just moving, just moving your body. So sometimes accept that as being the achievement, which it is. And they keep things lower impact. But you know, like with multiple sclerosis, like with every condition, once you're eating more, more plant-based vegan, you're going to feel the improvements. Like it doesn't matter what you have, it's going to improve. So just keep consistent. That's the most important thing. I also found out um, when we were chatting there early, so Cho, Cho Bella, she actually said, my son has been vegan from birth. That was in 1997. So that's 23 years ago. Oh, wow. Had two days off school. So only two days off school. Once when the whole class went down with an infection. Um, and the second time he had an accident. And a successful football player all his days in school. And very fit vegan lad. So, you know, another testament to a child mm -hmm. raised vegan and the benefits. Uh, question, just yeah. take a little turn off from specifically on fitness. And we will come back to it again. Uh, starting with Annalise, um, you know, well done to you, like at 14, going vegan. For quick, one quick one, I might have missed it earlier, but you know, were your parents vegan or what was your influence there in terms of at 14? And more, the other part of the question was, which for the three of you, to start with Annalise, you know, how did your friends, family, how have they reacted and how have you personally tried to you know, make a positive impact on them to make them open up a little more to looking at veganism? Um. 
so yes i was 14 um as i said earlier it was kind of that when i was eating a chicken drumstick with the bone that made me that was like the ping moment um where i thought this is an animal and obviously that didn't feel right to me um my parents they aren't vegan they aren't vegetarian i have um a couple of family members who are vegetarian now but one of my uncles was vegetarian and i th i think that might have had a bit of a a bit of an impact on me because when you're younger and you hear about these things and it's like oh, he's vegetarian what is that or oh, he's not eating meat so i knew what it was from quite a young age i had somebody in the family who wasn't eating meat at the time and um, so i think that triggered something in my mind as well so maybe i thought about those things a bit more um, my parents, they didn't really, you know, I said, I'm not eating meat anymore. I'm cutting, because remember 1999, the food products weren't available that we have now. Um, the information wasn't there that we have now. The in I didn't have the internet access. So all that kind of thing was really different back then. Um, so it was kind of a case of, I don't want to eat animals. I'm not eating meat. I found this soya milk. I'm going to have this instead. And even for me at the time, that long ago, because I didn't have the information, I almost felt like I was possibly going to be unhealthy because I didn't know at the time. So I actually thought I can't eat these animals because I, the animals, I don't want to do it. But back then I even thought I might have had some kind of detriment to my own health, but I still did it. Um, which may not have been the right, <laughs> may not have been the right thing, but I was like 14 and that's what I wanted to do. Um, so my parents, there was a bit of a, you know, you should have this, you might be missing out on things. Um, but it's like, well, if you give it to me, I'm not going to eat it. And there's not really anything, apart from force feed someone, there's not anything they can do. Um, so that wasn't really an issue as such. They didn't completely disagree. As I said, I had a family member who was vegetarian. So it wasn't that they were completely against it. I think they just thought I was maybe being a bit awkward. And also as I was a teenager, difficult, because I was a bit difficult. <laughs> I was a bit difficult, because we all are at that age. Um, but yeah, I just did what I wanted to do. For me, it didn't feel right. So even without all this information that we have now telling you how it's better for you and it's healthy for you and how it's good for the environment, I still knew in my heart of hearts that it was wrong. So I just stopped. Yeah, just stopped. Does that help? I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah. How about classmates? Sorry? How about classmates? Um, I don't think, I mean, I did have friends at school, but I was quite quiet. So I wasn't alone. I had sort of small group of friends. I was quite quiet and we didn't really, that wasn't really a subject that we, we didn't sort of compare food or anything like that. That wasn't really something that happened then. I don't know if maybe younger or teens now probably check what other people are eating a bit more than we used to. Um, I do remember doing a presentation at school which was absolutely terrifying for me because that speak speaking in front of people at that age is very ter terrifying in front of your classmates and we had an English class and I can't remember what the, you had to speak about something I think you could just choose the topic I think it was something important to you and I did a presentation on vivisection um, and sort of animal cruelty and things like that and I was probably 14 no yeah, this is high school, so 14, 15. And I remember I had all this information and these pictures from, um, is it Huntington Life Sciences? So it's sort of the really nasty looking pictures with monkeys with their heads off and be rats being tested on and all that kind of thing. And I did, <laughs> I did a presentation on it in my English class and I was showing these pictures to the class. And I don't even remember, I think everybody just was quite, Angry. I don't remember getting any questions. I don't remember getting any abuse for it, but it might have been more of a, a shock, perhaps. But I don't think it changed anything for anyone. But being that age and taking all these all these pictures into school at that age and showing people these animals and saying what goes on with animal testing. Um, but yeah, it's quite sad. I don't think I don't think it 
did anything. Uh, maybe it would now. Maybe, I think maybe children now compared to back to, I think um, the younger generation compared to when I was at school is a lot different now. I think they're a lot more aware of everything that's going on and they have the information. Um, whereas we, we just didn't have it. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a pretty big thing to do when you when you're that age and you know. Yeah. Do a presentation on the section. <laughs> <laughs> that's going well. Isn't it? <laughs> good, good for you for doing that. Yeah. Well, it may it may have had an effect. You know, they may they may not have said anything at the time, yeah. but it could have easily been in the back of their mind, and then they connected up a little bit through their life, and you know, it may well have had a, a bigger effect than you thought. And I know. Um, um, going back to to me when I went vegan um, 15 years ago I worked on a, a building site as a labourer and I worked, uh, worked for this uh, building company for quite a few years and uh, and every single break time was always about me and what I was eating and I had you know they used to really rip into me every single break time every day and uh, and yeah some people probably might have hated that but I actually really enjoyed it after a little while and it was it was my way of sort of you know when they were saying all these the ridiculous things to me you know it gave me that the um, sort of ammunition and, and the confidence as well to to really you know push the push their thoughts and, and boundaries as well you know they them thinking what they what they eat is you know fine obviously when you start to say a few things to them it, it obviously makes them question and i always wonder back to some of the people i you know maybe chatted to 14 15 years ago maybe maybe they've gone vegan or you know at this point in time i'll probably never know but you know all these little things that we do. They, they, you know, they may not change somebody straight away, but they certainly plant a few seeds, I think. And yeah. especially nowadays, where you can't you can't get away from vegan signs everywhere, can you? Pretty much. So, and and most people know someone who's vegan now, don't they? So, so it's, it, you know, the, the normalisation of it means that you know if somebody decides to you know try going vegan for a little while, it's it's not sort of frowned upon so much anymore, is it? I know when I would when I first turned vegan, you couldn't you couldn't even go and you struggle to even find soya milk in the supermarket, let alone any sort of vegan burgers and you know all the stuff we've got now. So it's, a, it's a, certainly a different uh, different place to live now, vegan. But yeah, what about you? Oh, I'm sorry, what you sorry. sorry, Dave. No, I was saying it's, it's definitely a different world, you know, now the accessibility to products now is quite easy. Like it's very easy now to go vegan, really. Like there's so much choice, so many yeah. recipes. Like there's so much information online, so many more people, you know, it's much easier than back like around in the 90s. It was quite hard. Before we went to the girls, just uh, Chow Bella just wanted to tell you that she thought your presentation was so brave, Annalise, and it will definitely have made some kind of impact for the good. So I just said I'd get that in. So Paula, on to you. Um, so again, you know, the whole impact from, I suppose, family, friends, you know, when you went vegan, what was your kind of reaction? How did you react to it? Have you managed to make some kind of impact on them? Yeah, so, yeah, I was vegetarian since I was a kid, so people were super annoying when I was vegetarian, like being from the south of Brazil, close to Argentina, the meat, like, tradition is super strong, and my whole family, like, not going to barbecues, people were, like, super annoying about it, but, yeah, so my, my parents were both vegetarian, and when I turned vegan five years ago, the first question my father asked me is, how are you going to get your protein? <laughs> and there's such a big myth about the protein. Um, so I, I explained to him like about protein and we don't need eggs and how dairy is terrible. So my father is now vegan. And, and in Brazil, like you were saying how easy it is to be vegan, but I think some countries are way behind and it's not so easy. Uh, I Great. think the UK, the UK is amazing and Europe in general, but some countries is still like, you, you struggle a bit. Um, of course, there are no excuses. So my mom is still is a work, is, I'm working on it. So she is 90% uh, vegan, but she keeps saying like how it's difficult in Brazil. Uh, it's more expensive, like dairy milk will be like one pound and soy milk will be like 10 pounds. Like it's insane how they put the price up for vegan products and stuff. But what I say is like my mom always taught me to be so kind to animals. We would save all the worms, put 
them back in the soil and save birds and rescue dogs and what I say is doesn't make sense you're being a hypocrite if you're saving animals all day and then go home and eat a, a dead animal so she totally understands she really uh, she always says you're completely right so my parents are always very supportive my friends not so much and I think almost every vegan lost some friends on the way <laughs> because they just cannot understand. And for me, veganism is such a big part of my life. I can't just stay quiet about it. Like if I'm gonna lose friends, I'm sorry, but I just, I, I can't just stay quiet. Like I cannot see any more abuse and don't do anything about it. I think, and that's why I think activism is so important. And of like the analyst presentation, like you never know, I just walk past a screen and I turn vegan. I didn't talk to anyone. I didn't say a word. Like you're always making a difference, even if you don't think about it, if you don't think you did. Uh, something you say, a seed you plant, like can make a huge impact in someone's life. So I think it's super important to keep talking about veganism. And people have this idea they don't want to be pushy vegans, but I think we have to be super pushy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Perfect. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I said, like we grew up in England both my parents did. I'm one of three girls um, and we all grew up together down in Cornwall. Um, I went to school here as well and uh, yeah since being vegan, well mine obviously started going dairy free um, and even then I've got like medics in my family so like in the pharmaceutical industries, optics and stuff like that so they've learned like I guess like the Western medicine is going to save you and maybe not eating plants. So I had to struggle, I felt, against pharmaceuticals, like the companies um, and what like my parents had been taught. Um, and so trying to, I luckily like went to university, I managed to get like well enough to go to university. And like Annalise was saying, like I'm 32 now. And when I was like 18, it was like a few shops would have soy milk and stuff. But my parents were not, uh, you know, they were not into me trying alternate diets to try and make myself well. And then when I went vegan, um, it's like they just didn't want to talk to me about it at all. So it was like this muted, like elephant in the room. And I think that really spurred me on because I felt so passionately about the connection to the animal straight away when I like turned vegan that I was like, I realized what activism was before I even realized what the difference was between plant-based and vegan. Mm -hmm. That I was like, I can't just not say anything about the animals. So that's when I looked into how I could be an activist. Um, and with my, parents and stuff I tried to explain to them why I wanted to not hurt animals because for me I think like most people we like love our family and think you know they created us to be compassionate people why would they not understand like we just want to align our morals with our actions just like they taught us to mm -hmm. um so I spoke to them about it and I've now taken the animal liberation pledge uh, for nearly a year um so I had a conversation with each parent um, separately and it was about a four hour conversation each uh, because they hadn't discussed veganism with me for over two years. And they were like, what? You're not going to sit down and even eat with us anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, because you and it makes me normalize you eating animals in front of me. And I can't do that anymore because it's not the right thing to do. And you won't like speak to me about it in any other way. So doing the Animal Liberation Pledge has been amazing. They've understood on a deeper level why I stand up for animals um, and why I want to be vegan. Um, my sisters, I've had a completely like separate experience. One of them is um, been training to be a medic and she um, didn't, like she's being taught completely the opposite of what I'm trying to do. So it's not her fault. I know that she had to like study really hard and be taught these like lessons of Western medicine. Um, but for me, because of my background, 
and how I personally went through like health conditions like we just like butt heads um and then my other sister she's been amazing like she went down like the plant-based route she used to live in Mexico and she saw um like when I was in Hawaii like they go spear fishing or like in Mexico you live off like the land and what it could give you um and then she realized like she didn't want to do that so she like went plant-based and it was like trying to connect the dots of like why veganism not plant-based so for the animals rather than just for yourself and your health um and so that's been amazing so now i feel like i have a comrade with my family um and yeah friends like because i moved back to the uk and like got in touch with old friends um then i just don't see people anymore because well, I say I don't see people. I get to meet people like Paola through street activism. So um, we started up um, street activism in Plymouth. And I think it's really important to um, it, like encompass yourself around like-minded people to give yourself the energy um, to, you know, be able to be activists and stand up for the animals. Um, and if people are there telling you you're brainwashed, that have known you since you were like five years old, or don't speak to me about this. And, you know, it's just negative energy. So I just was like, I, you know, I don't want to not ever see them again, but I would rather spend my time and energy speaking up for the animals. No, it's hugely important point. You know, like it's like in anything in life, you know, you, you need like-minded people around you. And there would be some people in your life, especially if you go vegan, who you can eliminate and you need to, and others say you need to limit your exposure to. So I suppose, especially when it's family, it's being sensitive to what way that might be done. But you're naturally going to gravitate towards people who are on the same kind of frequency and energy as you. Um, going to, back to the fitness side of things, obviously 2020 has been a very stressful year in many ways for everybody. You know, we've all had you know, stuff we've had to deal with. We've all had you know, our own challenges. Taking like everyone's into fitness and exercise and that whole side of things. Mental fitness is something that's massive and mental health. And something needs a lot of focus this year, especially from what everyone has been exposed to and what would people will continue to be exposed to. So I just want to go through everyone and, you know, how did you cope with no access to gyms, lockdown, stuck at home, all this type of thing? How did you cope in terms of keeping active, keeping healthy and keeping that mental fitness, mental health and counteracting the negative effects of it? So Nathan, sure, kick off with yourself. Yeah, well, I've been, I've been pretty lucky because I have my own gym, so... So I've actually, um, obviously when I couldn't train my, my clients, it um, gave me a lot of spare time to really concentrate on, you know, eating well, um, you know, really training hard and I've managed to increase my weight by a, a few kilos as well. So, so for me, it's actually been, it's, it's been good in some ways, um, not in other ways that I've not made any income at all for at least three months, but um yeah, apart from that side of it, luckily I have my own gym and I've, I've, you know, I've really concentrated on that. That's got me through it, I think. Just having this, you know, at my home is, uh, has been really beneficial for me. But um, I can imagine people who have, you know, been into training, you know, four or five times a week and then not been able to do it. It's, it must have been extremely tough. So I've been one of the lucky ones, definitely. What about you, uh, Annalise? You've been keeping um, up with training? Yeah, I've been really lucky too um my routine hasn't changed apart from the amount of time i leave the house um my routine hasn't changed i've still been working full time but working from home um and i kind of have a home gym set up in my garage um i have the space for it so everything for me has pretty much been the same um and it hasn't really affected my motivation either there have been times where I don't know, I kind of feel, I don't know if other people felt this, I feel more tired than usual, but maybe it's because I'm in the house and not outside as much. Maybe that's what it is. I've been feeling a bit more tired than I usually would. Um, but my motivation's kind of been there because I think lockdown, it can go two ways. You can either be completely unmotivated and not want to do anything, or you can think, right, I've got this time, this is going on, and I can do something good with this and make the most of it. Um, so I kind of kicked it up a bit to start with. Anyway, I was like, oh my God, I'm not leaving the house. I'm not walking. I'm doing step-ups on the steps in the garden just to keep something going. 
because my motivation is that I physically want to stay fit and healthy. So I'm going to do that regardless of what else is going on in the world, just because something else is going on and it is affecting us and it's bad, but I've kind of got myself in my own little safe bubble at home. So that's not going to change anything for me. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of like, I know some people have really been struggling. Um, I'm lucky to have quite a large garden and outdoor space and a sort of gym set up. But if you're living in a flat and you haven't got the outdoor area or the room, I can imagine that's been really difficult for people. Um, but I think the mental side of it is a big part of it. Mental fitness is really important, probably more important than physical fitness. Um, because if you're not mentally fit, how do you how do you get yourself to do anything? If you're feeling awful, you don't have that energy to some people don't have that energy to want to get up in the morning if you're mentally drained and not happy with what's going on. Um, so for people like that, I would recommend yoga if you don't already do it. Um, meditation. I mean, there's loads of apps and YouTube videos and things like that that can help people. Um, but I think that's a big part of it. If you're struggling um, to do the physical, you need to look at the mental side of it first and hopefully the rest will follow. Yeah. Good advice, very good advice. It needs to be a daily process. Like I think what you touched on there, Annalise, is so important. Like in meditation, people are becoming a little bit more aware of what it is and it's not so kind of airy-fairy now. It's seen as something that's actually useful. Things like yoga, the exact same thing, especially with many athletes and sports stars and footballers and stuff now taking on board in teams. And I think that's the mental fitness. There needs to be a shift. Instead of us looking at everything aesthetically and how we look and it's all about being body beautiful, the mental fitness is the most important thing. Because if you're not motivated, if, you're, if your mind goes because of something in life, you're not going to do the training or the food anyway. So it's like having that control tower in your brain, having that in order so that when challenge hits in life, you will be stronger more often than not to keep exercising to keep eating the right things because you know it's even more important versus what most people do is the second any difficulties hit they drop exercise and they drop the food to go the totally wrong direction so i think there needs to be a big shift now more than ever towards focusing on mental fitness for for i said the bigger picture as opposed to just purely aesthetic things seeing exercise is only aesthetic because there's way more benefits than just the aesthetic benefits like that's nearly like the benefit the byproduct of everything else that comes with it. So great tips, Annalise. Uh, on to okay. Paula and Tori. Did you want to add something, Nathan? No, no, just saying excellent, excellent point, Station. It's been brought up, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, what yeah. about you, Paula and Tori? How's it affected you with the lockdown? Yeah, so talking about mental health and stuff, like exercising was always my therapy. Like I go insane if I don't exercise. Uh, my job is uh, working in the hospital and I was working with COVID. Uh, super stressful and super frustrating so I kept exercising because my mind needed it's not about looking good or like if I start my day with exercise I have a completely different day like I just feel so much better so mm. yeah jeans were closed so I start I really got into running running every single day did my first half marathon training now for a marathon so for me like I had to continue I had to continue moving and also, yeah, with a pandemic, with a virus that can kill people, like it's super important to keep exercising, to keep your immune system really good. And it's crazy that nobody talks about it. Like there's a pandemic and eating the right foods and exercising is so important to keep your immune system super perfect to fight this virus. And I actually got COVID, but I didn't have any symptoms at all. And I'm sure that my fit, vegan, healthy life is uh, it was a big part of it. Definitely. Great stuff. Tori? Uh, so for me, I live um, and work uh, at the Greenhouse Bar Retreat with my husband and business partner. So we like, literally when we're locked down, we're surrounded by farms. And then it's just like our little garden. That's like our little vegan spa retreat. And meant that I would have no gym. <laughs> And I was like, like, just like Paula said, um, for me, like keeping that movement going is really important mentally for me to know that I will be, not be sedentary and not like seize up or anything. Like I just have that inside me now. Like it makes me feel better like every time I go out. So 
it's really important for us um like nate was saying like because we're self-employed it was difficult mentally thinking like how can we do the best out of this bad situation so we um would just carry on with the business so we like the upcycle stuff um trying to be as an environmentally as possible so i find a podcast like you're saying about like mental health um so like find a podcast that i thought would be really um useful for me so i got into cold water like swimming which was about like wim hof the guy that does that so i'd like listen and like try and take from and all these amazing inspiring people so i'd be listening to that whilst i was digging or like having to like walk wood through the garden or something so i was really lucky like annalise said like to have my own bubble of space that i knew i was like safe in um but it was like trying to mentally think no this is exercise like just moving these pallets of wood from that end of the garden to that is the exercise and if that's what i've got today if i can like learn something for my mental health as well as keep physically like moving and exercising that was really important to me and it was really mm. helpful excellent and good you using your time with the podcasts and things and you know this is the thing that people need to do. People say they don't have time for things, but it's like even people are driving. The driving could be their, like a university, whether it be learning stuff, be motivated, podcasts, audiobooks, instead of listening to the news all the time. You know, same yeah. as with TV and soap operas. People have the time. It's just a case of making better use of the time. If you all have 24 hours in the day, there's no excuse for not doing some form of exercise, whether it be strenuous or whether it be just easy going, just keeping active, just moving. People can do stuff for their mindset. You know, people can advance themselves in skills or whatever it may be. It's just they have to start using their time more. Like when people say, I don't have time for something, all it means is they're prioritizing, prioritizing something else instead because it's like this slot, like a jigsaw. There is a piece gone in, but what are you putting it in for? The piece you shouldn't be putting in isn't being put in, so it's just switch them. So it's a, at the end of the day, we prioritize what we are prioritizing at that time. And, you know, people need to look at that and take ownership and, make changes where it's necessary. And again, like I said a while ago, especially from the mental health aspect, we need to be listening to the right books in terms of, obviously audio has become a big thing now. So audio books, podcasts, you know, anything like that, YouTube videos, reading, if you read, you know, whatever method's gonna be, make use of it. Meditation, like Annalise said, yoga, we need to work on our mindset more than ever. And, you know, this is hopefully what this last six months or so has allowed people to reflect on and decided and committed to making these kind of positive changes for their life because it does have to be part of a lifestyle. In terms of whole lockdown and exercising and stuff, like being a triathlete, it wasn't great because you know it meant I couldn't swim. So that was one thing. So I live in the city, all the pools and everything were closed. Um, we had we had uh, lockdowns in terms of you could only go within a certain perimeter. So it was initially for a good while it was two kilometers. So that wasn't any good for me cycling. And then running wide was like doing two kilometer loops and stuff. So I was able to get outside and get fresh air. And thankfully, the weather was amazing for the three months of lockdown we had here. So I was out running but doing loops, the same boring two kilometers all the time. At home, all I had was one five kilo dumbbell because the gym I use, if I'm ever working with clients, it's not mine. And they shut it down as part of a tennis club. So I couldn't access it. So I had one five kilo dumbbell. I had two one and a half kilo dumbbells and one 2.3 kilo dumbbells. And obviously, that's quite light to what I'd normally be used to. But like I said to people, you make best use of what you have. So I'd use a chair, my body, those dumbbells, did a lot more higher reps first than what I'd used to do. I still was able to do great workouts, using body weight for a lot of cardio stuff, where normally I'd be swimming, cycling, running, set loads of things like burpees, jump jacks, plyometric type movements, you know, squat jumps, anything that was more intensive. So my objective during the period was to keep my fitness, not necessarily improve it because I wasn't able to do the things I would need to improve, but at least keep it. And then as well from the mental health aspect, because again, being self-employed, I took a hell of a hit. It was important for my mental health more than anything. And that's something I reminded myself of from day one. Plus I stressed to people that, you know, I know I work with or who follow me and stuff around, around the world that you need to be exercising for your mental health more than anything right now. Forget the body. This is mental health zone we have all have to get into. So, yeah, so it's a case of working around what you have. Work what you have, with, with what you have. That's all you can do in every situation. Yeah, very much. I think is exactly like you say there. Make the most of any any situation you have. You know, it's a, 
you know, it's only bad if you make it you make it a bad situation, isn't it? There's always going to be something good you can do out of anything that's, that seems quite negative. So for me, like I said, I had a lot of spare time and I, and I put that into, you know, looking after myself, which I sort of didn't prioritise quite as much when I was busier before. So, uh, yeah, so I, you know, changed that to actually really concentrating on myself and making sure I'm, you know, the best I can be. And uh, it seems like all of us managed to find something really, really positive out of this, which is, which is fantastic. Isn't it? You got any other questions you would like to ask, Dave? Uh, well, we do think towards working towards a wrap up. If everyone gives like one main tip they would give, now it could be about fitness, it could be about health, it could be something a tool they use from again the mindset, like we've just said, for mental fitness, whatever it may be, you know, for because we're going to have a wide range of people who are watching this people who are, you know, very far away from being vegan or just a little bit curious, people who are on a journey towards it and. You know, they're just they're just trying to find their way. People who are almost there, people who are already vegan, but they can obviously be, be better. In terms of, there's quite a lot of unhealthy vegans in terms of how they eat, and it's all processed food, so they can improve too. So, you know, for whatever aspect or part of someone's journey they're on, what kind of tip would you give towards for someone to you know get improved being vegan, moving towards that direction? So we start with Annalise. For improving, so gradually introducing veganism you mean yeah so uh, yeah. considering me adapting as a lifestyle i think um well some people have two obviously there's two approaches you can go all in and make the switch or you can do it gradually um i think that varies from person to person because it is the products are there now so you can just jump and do it if you really want to um but you get people who they do like the meat products for me that wasn't an issue once I associated it with an animal that wasn't tasting good to me even cheese wasn't tasting good to me and I know that's a big part of what people struggle with um so it's probably just to do it gradually and not to be like hard on yourself about it because I know a lot of people once they realize and they make that connection and they feel like they can't do it they really beat themselves up about it and they feel bad that because they know they're doing something that they don't want to be doing so the first thing is don't be hard on yourself you've recognized the cruelty and everything that's going on you know what's right you know you want to transition into veganism so that's an amazing thing you've looked into it you know what the word means it's good already um, that's really positive so you need to keep positive in your mind and that goes for anything that you're doing with your fitness um, it's all in the mind so you need to stay positive you know you're doing something that's good and that will help you transition the more you know you're doing good the more you will want to do good the more you will feel good inside from what you're doing so if you can't jump straight into it just do it gradually just swap something um, you might have sort of regular meals that you eat during the week. So you might have like a spaghetti, a bolognese meal. So you think, okay, so that night is bolognese night. I'm going to swap the mince over for like a soya mince on that meal. Um, you might have burger night and then you swap it and you try it. And you swap it over um, and just gradually start switching your foods over to the vegan alternatives. I know there's a lot of people who feel that... Um, it's not as healthy and they don't like eating the processed vegan products. Um, but veganism, yes, it's great to be healthy and eat the more natural foods, but you can eat the processed foods and that definitely makes it a lot easier for people. So you don't need to think if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be on a rice and beans diet because you don't need to, you don't need to think I need to eat salad only. This is really difficult. How do people do this? Because that's not how it has to be. Um, so I would recommend all your sort of looking at the meals you normally would eat and then finding the meat alternatives and gradually switch them over. Um, the same for milk. Um, milk's an easy one to swap over because most people, I mean, some people just drink it, but I think generally people use it in drinks and other meals. So um, find a milk you like, experiment with those. There's a lot to choose from. Um, Personally, I'm a fan of oat milk, so I would recommend that. Um, cheese, also, that's a big one. I know people like cheese, but really just 
do you maybe just do a bit more research on where your cheese comes from um, and that might put you off it a bit more um, but there's some great cheese alternatives now I mean they used to be quite yucky I remember having one years ago that was like it was kind of like grated carrot it was awful um, so I just didn't eat it I didn't eat a cheese alternative if you don't like I mean do you need it do you actually need it if you don't like it just don't eat it you don't need cheese um, yeah just do this gradual swap and stay positive with what you're doing because everything you're doing is a step in the right direction and gradually you will feel better and you know you're doing good yeah. I, think, I do ramble <laughs> I think it's I think it's very good to just to, to let people know that yeah even if even if you realize you're completely against it you know it, it doesn't have to be an instant thing and you know some people like you know like i did you know and, and a few of us have just instantly changed but you know even if you give yourself a, a couple of weeks to just gradually change what you know one or two items you know as you go and and, and work your way into it knowing that at some point soon you're going to be you know fully vegan and then that that's it isn't it but, yeah, it's a good, it's a good thing, really, and, and and the whole, you know, the the sort of unhealthy, you know, fast food vegans, you know, if some people just don't care about their health, so you know, if they if they can eat something that doesn't involve an animal dying or being harmed, then then yeah, that's all good for the movement, isn't it? Obviously, we're, you know, when we're looking into more the health side of it, then you know, even if people go from eating a meat burger to a vegan burger and then gradually work into a whole food plant based diet, that is. You know that's going to be the optimal place but you know some people it takes a while you know it took me a few years to realize you know that the, the best foods are the ones in the in their natural state you know not ones that come out of a factory somewhere so that'd be my my kind of advice anyway what about you paula sorry yeah so as i mentioned before like uh, i was very unhealthy smoking drinking and i think if we want to look after the animals we have to look after ourselves we are also animals so we also need to be treated with respect and love uh, self-love i think we can only really care about the others if you first put yourself as a priority and that's what i've been trying to do in the last few years like my health and myself is priority and if i don't want to do stuff if i don't want to see people I just do what my body is asking. And I think my advice would be, don't worry about protein. I hear so much when we do activism, like how you get to protein, you need meat for protein. No, you don't. My body changed a lot. I gained a lot of muscle without any animal products. Every plant has protein. You can build muscle. You can be super fit without hurting animals. So just, uh, yeah, do some research, watch Game Changers and you see that protein is super easy to get uh, and it's so much healthier like animal products are super inflammatory so for your recovery for your fitness they're actually really bad so go vegan and yeah that's it <laughs> so how, do I, how do i add to that <laughs> uh, yeah amazing um same similar lines and i just say like get yourself informed like that was the number one thing with me, like it's hidden for a reason. Someone's getting paid. Um, you know, you guys are like triathletes and you know, working out every single day. How you, we know in Game Changers, people are literally doing it at the top of their game. People live vegan, win races, everything they're doing, like it's out there. All we need to do is do our research, inform ourselves, watch Dominion, and um, align yourselves. Yeah, and yeah, just to add to that, this point I was going to make, I think for, again, people looking to move this direction, uh, educating themselves is massive, becoming informed, and look, just even start by asking questions. Quite simply, you know, look at your plate, where did that come from? And then follow the trail back to where it's coming from. And like we said earlier, even with kids, something as basic as that's going to, because there's only one answer, where what it is, where it came from. So kids will instantly reboot, uh, What's the word? Re not rebellion, but you know they reject it. Let's say they reject it naturally, just because from their heart. You know, whereas an adult it will have to overcome a lot of conditioning and you know and the, the beliefs that they have been ingrained into their brain of where things really come from. And you know it can be quite shocking, especially something like Dominion. You know these are pretty shocking things to see Earthlings 
they're really shocking. Some people like don't want to watch them because they don't want to face up to it. Some people don't even believe, but that's because they don't want to believe. But the main thing is start asking questions. Where does this come from? And when you start doing that, you're opening up the door and then you're going to get some education. And at the end of the day, if you have the information and you're educated, at least then you can make an informed decision. And it's like for anybody, if it's even for each of us, share information with people, like for the people who are attending and listening, we're sharing information. It's up to them now what to do with it. Some may choose to ignore, that's their own decision, but it's informed decisions. And for each of us, we made informed decisions during our own journey. So I think, yeah, the education part is massive. And just focus on making little changes. You know, it's like for me, I was a seven-year journey. And when I first saw my son, son after a few weeks thinking, right, this isn't normal. Like, you know, it's not normal for him to not be sick. You know, first I thought he was going to be sick because he was vegan anyway. So I thought he's in big trouble. And two, kids are always sick. This kid's not getting sick at all. And he's growing and his brain's working better and just crazy. So I started asking questions and looking into it more and looking into it more and looking into it more. And eventually after seven years, I went fully vegan. Someone else can do it overnight. The main thing is to go at the pace that suits you. You know, I think for each of us, it's important as well that we do it that way. You know, a lot of people can become very defensive and confrontational and it doesn't serve any purpose. And we need to inform people and be empathetic that unless we were raised vegan since birth, you know, we were in their position at one stage and be empathetic that they again, their minds are closed at that time and we're just trying to unlock them and try to wake their consciousness to the reality and the emotional consciousness as well. So yeah, education, asking questions, like everyone there, ask questions, guys. If you're not already vegan, ask questions. Where did that come from? And follow the trail and see where you go then. Guys, you've been amazing. Like it's been amazing listening to your stories. You've shared some fantastic information. Like we're really, really grateful myself and Nathan and Tim and the Veg Fest, you know, Veg Fest itself for your time today on a Sunday. And I just want to welcome back Veg Fest founder Tim back onto the call. Hey guys, yeah, I've just been listening. Thanks for that. I just want to add actually, Dave, I quite agree. Asking why, why you should go vegan, and then ask how. Because they're sort of two different questions. The why is really simply being fair to animals some justice for them. It's working out that as humans, we don't really have a right to use animals. In fact, animals have a right not to be used. And that's it, really. It's the why we should go vegan is to be fair to animals. And that's something that you can do up here overnight. You know, that the how you go vegan, how you adopt a plant-based diet, how you swap over clothing and how you you know, get into some of those moral debates about, you know, using animals for testing and entertainment. That, that can be a journey and that can take time. And as all your guests have said, you know, sometimes people can switch straight in. Other times people do need to encourage themselves and work towards, it can take some time. But the important thing I think is to ask, as you said yourselves, you know, why, why should I go vegan? And when you see that, the, the how I go vegan is really then a matter of basically following the ABCs. There's huge amounts of really reliable information out there. Um, and, and for some people, as you say, that can happen instantly. Other people, it's, it's a journey. But even after 36 years of choosing not to use animals as a lifestyle choice, I'm still learning. Um, and this weekend has been a good case in point. I've learned quite a lot from listening in. Um, I should imagine that our admins have been listening in too. I should be very yeah. interested to see what Osama, Dina and Hamza have to say about um, the vegan lifestyle, having listened to, I think there are 16 live stream sessions over two and a half days. <laughs> well, to listen in. <laughs> but guys and girls, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to wrap up there. Just to mention that the recording is available for another 30 days on the site. Um, and please do, if you've been listening, do go and visit our exhibitors or in the exhibitors lounge. Do go and have a little browse and maybe a share and maybe even a shop. Um, if you want to follow up any of the information, there's, there's just stacks, stacks on here. Um, so I do want to say thank you again. Thank you especially uh, to our, our guests, Paul and Tori and Annalise for joining us today on Sunday. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Nathan. A big shout out especially for Dave, because Dave, honestly, again, you put in a, a huge amount of work, unspoken and unsaid, but I've seen it, and I know that we're very grateful on the VegFest team for all of that. Um, thank you once again. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye.